Alright, uh, but otherwise we'll get started and uh, we'll hear from the uh, prime sponsor. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and uh, Commerce Committee members. My name is John Heichel. I am representing Hillsborough 7, the towns of Gosstown and Ware. Um, <clears throat> I brought this bill forward, 1251, uh, to allow grocery stores to sell uh, spirits. Uh, in the first term that I served in the House, um, I got to speak with a lot of local businesses and people around my area. Um, this past, uh, last year when we campaigned for my second term, I got to speak to even more local businesses, including several of the grocery stores and, and uh, folks and I, uh, managers and people that work in these stores. I also own a small auto repair business in uh, the west side or Penardville of Manchester, Gosstown. And I asked those customers too. And when we talk about the ability for grocery stores to sell liquor, the number one complaint that I get is it's uh, inaccessible, it's difficult to, uh, difficult to get to, um, people would if they had the opportunity to have to be more convenient to a store, they would certainly um, uh, like that. So I figured I would sponsor this bill to bring forward uh, and let the process uh, begin. First of all, though, with the committee, I would like to request, after reading the uh, final bill that's been given to us, in reading the fiscal note, I would like to ask the committee um, regarding the fiscal note uh, as being um, due to its inaccuracy and its biasness. I understand the purpose of it, but there's nothing on there that gives anybody the impression that this has anything good about it. And the problem I have is it has a lot of things good about it, and what's been stated in the fiscal note is actually inac inaccurate. So I would like to offer to the committee to make a mo I, I can't, I don't think, but I'd like someone, if they would, to make a motion to strike this fiscal note. Um, on the, just on the fact that it is truly uh, not an accurate representation of what this bill is going to do for the state. The, People that I have met over and over, including uh, and and as we go down the as we go down this past year of uh, <coughs> legislative agendas, uh, majority Republican platforms, things that I stand for uh, on a regular basis of uh, more jobs, lower taxes, less government intrusion in our lives. Um, finding ways to increase funds to the general fund so we can pay down either some of our debts or maintain uh, some of the programs that we do have and we would like to keep them. Um, we're always in that search looking for some way to do this and I find that this is truly one of the best ways to allow businesses to now have a product that their customers really want to buy, another product that their customers want to buy. There's a huge demand for this through the local grocery stores uh, throughout the state that would like to sell this product to their customer. Um, and and there's, a, there's a large uh, demand for it by the people that want to buy this product. And I know so many people that don't <coughs> purchase it because it's just not convenient. Or they have to plan a trip, some people have to drive five or ten or fifteen miles or or have to plan to actually when they drive by a liquor store to get it. So uh, they requested me to do that and on behalf of uh, uh, grocers and retailers and uh, just the idea that getting more people in grocery stores will certainly sell more grocers, groceries. Um, I do believe this is a good bill and I uh, keep this brief and I just certainly hope that uh, you support this. Uh, and let's move on to the House with the recommendation to uh, OTP. Okay. Thank you. Thank 
Mr. Chairman. Do you disagree with the uh, fiscal note in that they indicate 77 state store locations now would increase to 1,400? Do you disagree with that portion of it? I don't disagree with that portion of it. I disagree with the portion of uh, the uh, 12, uh, 12 more um, um, inspectors or, or enforcers. But I would just as soon strike the entire fiscal note. Further questions? Thank you. Uh, so you do agree that if, if, if if the number increases that I buy, of necessity, it has to require more supervision. And additionally, this is going to take away sales from the established liquor stores as they exist right now. All we're going to do is spread instead of selling in 77 locations, they're probably going to sell the same volume in a greater <coughs> space. And no real advantage economically to the state. Well, my uh, studies say that that's not correct. Um, the studies that I have show that the uh, liquor stores will uh, sustain their, uh, their sales mm -hmm. and the grocery stores that are presently not being able to sell that uh, will add an additional $20 million or so to the general fund. Not to mention the uh, increase in, um, in, uh, in a new licensing fee that would allow for, let's say, I, I would call it a full liquor license as you do in restaurants. Uh, that don't that sell full liquor, including beer and wine and, and spirits. So there'd be a there'd be a uh, there'd be an increase in revenue just because of the new fee for the uh, new license, and not to mention the additional sales in those in whatever stores. And this isn't every store that's going to have to buy into it. This is every store that wants to buy into it. That new license is that in here? I didn't see that. I, I didn't see the difference in here. Is it, are, you, are, you, are you suggesting we should put one? No, I'm suggesting that, that, that if a new license happens, then and that would come through. Um, um, if a new license happens, then that would be a way to, to get more money. But no, it's not part of that bill. Correct. Um, yeah. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Thank you for the testimony. Um, you just brought up a question. Um, you're saying that there is a possibility that these off-premises licenses would create uh, income from new uh, license fees? Well, it's, it's possible. I mean, if you have a new thing that's not necessarily, but if, but if, it, if it was to happen, there would be additional revenue from that as well because stores right now that are selling beer and wine, there's a price for that license. Do you have some feeling for how much that would be? Seven hundred fifty thousand. If if that was to happen, uh, there's no guarantee that that would happen. But if that was to happen, that would be an increase of um, seven hundred fifty thousand, maybe a million dollars, million and a half at the most throughout the state. I mean, it's substantial money, but it's not in this legislation to do. But it certainly could happen. Okay. Uh, just for everybody's education, right now. We have a retail wine, combination license. I assume combination is beer and wine. And the beer and wine license is uh, for one cash register, it's $336. Two to three cash registers, $540. And four or more cash registers is $812. And, and uh, sir, Mr. Chair, to answer this gentleman, uh, Representative uh, Head's question, um, <coughs> the my train of thought. Your question to me, Mr. Uh, Representative Head, was, could you repeat that, please? Well, my first one was concerning the, uh, uh, the volume of stores moving from 77 to 1,400. And I keep That's the kind of thought. Though. Yeah, that was my thought. Well, the answer to that is that those stores are already selling beer and wine, and they already have mm -hmm. enforcement capabilities to handle the, those stores presently. So there's no real increase in the amount of stores selling alcoholic well, beverage. So I guess the question would be is how many liquor investigators do you think? I think we have sufficient amounts right now to cover the stores that are selling alcoholic beverages. 
So I would I would say none, but I'm not. That's not what I do every day. I mean, that's not my job. <laughs> but uh, in your opinion, we don't need. In my opinion, we don't need any more. There you go. Because they are because they are <laughs> able to handle what we have right now. Got it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Representative. Apropos that question, there are states because uh, I've lived in one where uh, there was a liquor store, a liquor commission store, ABC store selling the full line, and in grocery stores you could buy uh, the equal mix. So there are some states where liquor sales are allowed off-premise. They used to go to the A&P in Baton Rouge, Louisiana by uh, the bourbon owner. So do we, can we learn anything from the other states that allow full sales at all outlets versus the, the kind of structure we have where it's liquor only at the, the state stores? What has been the requirement in those other states of additional enforcement or inspection requirements? The, the, are you aware of the, the, I'm, I'm aware of the states that do that. I'm not aware Take of that particular question. question. But, but they'll be... They'll be can we learn from what the other states uh, spend to cover the mixed mode of sales versus... The, the we sure can. Sure. And I'm sure there's plenty of folks behind me that have those answers for you. Well said. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, will then go to... And the co-sponsors, uh, Representative Coffey. Welcome her back. <laughs> uh, I'm wide eyes behind me. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be back. I do have written testimony, which I had given to my colleague in anticipation of my presence not being here. Since I am here, I respectfully like to be typed before I submit it. So for the record, I am Representative Jen Coffey from Merrimack District 6. It is my pleasure to co-sponsor this bill, though I know it will make some folks a little unhappy. I believe that the state of New Hampshire has for far too long held a monopoly on the liquor market. I believe that this practice hurts small and large business owners who in other states are able to sell these products to enhance their businesses and increase their profitability. Bottom line, we know that that has a direct effect on job creation. When a business <coughs> is profitable, they have more jobs available. If a business is very profitable, perhaps they expand and they have even more jobs available. And in this economy, we as a legislature have a responsibility to ensure that everything that we do enhances the ability of businesses to be able to prosper on our state. To ourselves, these businesses do just that. Here, they're not allowed. Should this bill become law, we have actually placed in there that the businesses would have to get their supply of liquor from the state. Now, personally, I would like them to be able to get their liquor from utilizing the free market, to be able to go around and find the best possible price. But I also realize that this is a change for the state of New Hampshire and one that must be done incrementally and not dramatically, and that I do recognize that there could potentially be an effect on revenue if we suddenly said, okay, no more liquor being sold by the state. So in realizing that, I believe that at this juncture, Having businesses purchase their supply of liquor from the state helps the state's economy at the same time it's allowing businesses to expand and to increase their profitability. There are a number of businesses that would probably begin to sell liquor more. There are a number of places you can buy beer and alcohol, beer and wine now, such as my little convenience store. I live in Andover. If anybody in my town wants to have anything a little bit stronger than that, they need to be able to drive at least, to give or take, anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes to get to a local liquor store owned and operated by the state that may or may not be opened when they get there. If you're a shift worker, you may have difficulties ever getting to a liquor store because you can't get there when they're open. So I would venture to say to you that this increases the availability. The market has greater availability if there are more places that are selling it, sales automatically increase. So even if the state saw a slight dip in their retail, they would see a substantial, I believe, increase in their wholesale sales, which would, I think, either meet or exceed the existing sales, given the greater amount of ability that, availability that would be out there, especially when you're talking about areas that aren't in Concord or aren't in Manchester, and to go to a liquor store is a trip and is something that takes people a little bit more long, longer period of time to get there. And like I said, if you're a shift worker, which a lot of people are, you're lucky if you can go to a store while it's still open. 
From the perspective of consumers, we're getting greater availability. From the perspective of business open, uh, owners, we're allowing them to expand their businesses, increase their profitability, and therefore increase the possibilities of there being an expansion of the job market. That being said, I, th I truly believe that this bill only serves to be a greater good for the business markets of the state of New Hampshire. I think that we can learn a little something from the state from the south of us, and that their businesses do profit in that regard. <coughs> and opening up this market is just great to stimulate job growth. Bottom line, I encourage you to support this bill and pass this legislation into law. And I thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to be real quick. Uh, for the record, uh, Representative Al Baldessaro of Rockingham County, District 3, which includes Auburn and Londonderry. Real quick, this is a win-win for the state of New Hampshire. Why, why is this a win? First of all, we're still in the liquor business. We'll still be able to sell to the stores. We're not going to lose anything. Uh, I'll give you an example. If I have Representative Jim Head show up to my house and I say to him, listen, I don't want to drink that cheap vodka that you Air Force guys like, but I want some Sambuca. And then I realize I'm out of Sambuca. I have to drive, um, you know, probably about uh, 15 minutes or so, get on the highway, go to, uh, take a, to exit 5, or I've got to go up on the highway 93 to the state liquor store just to get a good bottle of Italian Sambuca. Now, I would probably sit in my house and say to heck with it, I'm not going to do it, it's too far, too long. How many other people out there are just like me that would say, look at the money that we're losing to the state of New Hampshire. So I'm hoping that, like I have a store right up the street from me, uh, that, uh, which I could probably be there in three minutes to in order to take care of my guest, uh, okay, and be able to uh, get in and get out of the store. This here on the uh, budget here, on with the methodology, and I'm looking at the cost. You gotta love the government. Every time we come up with an idea to think out of the box and how we can generate more income, the first thing that goes off in their mind is, wow, we can get more jobs. Let's add that in here and beef this up. This isn't about we need more inspectors, okay? I think we have enough inspectors because if they're going out into the liquor store every day, all they gotta do is make a few stops on some of the stores that are already in different parts of the state that we have no liquor stores there. And all this is is a win-win for the community. That's all I have. I won't be going to other stuff that I have that reps already covered. Okay. Thank you, Thank uh, you. Mr. Chairman. It's an honor. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> <laughs> Marine, I'll be over there. Thank you. 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 <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Committee, for hearing my testimony. I'm uh, Representative Jonathan Maltz, uh, representing the towns of Hill, Hudson, Litchfield, and Pelham, Hillsborough, District uh, 27. I co-sponsored this bill because I, too, believe that uh, yeah, the availability of the current liquor stores, 77 throughout this entire state, is a bit limited. I got up to Coloss County, and uh, you can have to trek quite a ways from your campground in order to find some place to buy hard liquor up there, whereas I feel if the you know, existing grocery stores and convenience stores up there were able to sell spirits, uh, the overall volume would most likely increase a bit. I don't want to encourage over alcoholism, we should recognize that it is the choice of uh, individuals whether or not to consume alcohol in a responsible manner. And we should not make it too inconvenient for them to go and do that. Uh, regarding the uh, issue of the fiscal note and the number of inspectors, if um, pretty much every place that would start selling spirits is currently going to be selling beer and wine. So if there are not enough inspectors now, that is a completely separate matter than if they also sell spirits. Uh, I don't believe the two are related. There are either enough inspectors now, and it won't change if they start adding spirits, or there are not enough inspectors now, and that should be addressed some other matter. It's not whether or not these stores also sell spirits. Looking at a map of the state liquor stores on my little device here, I see if you start heading west from Concord, you can 
traverse a whole lot of territory before you get to the next liquor store in Walpole. And while there's not a whole lot of people who live in this area, there are some people who live there, and they shouldn't have to travel an hour or more in order to get a bottle of vodka. As a former member of the Air Force, I prefer a good scotch myself. <laughs>